Cars with Control Trends, and I'm here with Mike Marston from EasyIO. And Mike, you have something very special to tell us. We're at the KML Carpenters Union Hall, the apprentice training area, and we're going to introduce you to Mike, uh, I'm sorry, to the systems integrator Dave Simmers from Rennick Brothers and Pat Butler, the facility director. Mike, tell us about what we're going to take a look at. Well, first of all, um, thanks for letting us come here today. This is an awesome EasyIO installation. We've just been looking at the rooftop units. And uh, one thing I wanted to show the guys today was some really awesome new technology. Um, this is the FW14 that you can see, two different antennas. Nice. So you can put a magnet on top of the panel. You know, this is live wire sheets, magnet over IP, and meshed mesh between controllers at a crazy price. What's our input and output? Oh, well, we've got eight uh, universal inputs, uh, sorry, eight universal inputs here, four AOs here, and two DOs. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, well, Mike, uh, it's going to show us here, so let's. Uh, Let's take a look at the yeah. I've got Dave Simmers here from Rennick, and I've got Pat Butler from KML, who's working at this lovely facility. As you can see, this, uh, this is where the future carpenters are uh, all trained to make lovely homes for us all. Um, my father was a carpenter, by the way, so it's uh, kind of ironic to be back here. Um, what we've got here is a screen. Um, we've got the laptop set up, and um, you can hear the relay clicking off, on and off. But we've actually got Wi-Fi now connected to live wire sheets. No more upload, download, it's all live wire sheets. You can see we've got different kinds of antennas here. So you can, there's two ports for the antennas. You can have a magnetic one that just sits on top of a panel. You can have a much bigger one with a higher dB gain. And you've got one of these standard ones here. So obviously if it's in a panel, we're not gonna use this one in a metal panel. We'd have some kind of remote one. Um, I've also got a router connected and tethered between the two. So we're using People might say, why don't you use Zigbee? Why don't you use other stuff like that? Well, why would you when you've got Wi-Fi is so cheap? What I'm gonna do is just sketch down what we've got here. It is a little hard to see everything, but I've got a wire sheet here. So let me show you what I've got. I've got an FW here. We're gonna just call this FW. That's got a built-in access point, okay? This is then talking to this router over here. There's a TP-Link router, so it's tethered to that router and you can do that out of the box from your cell phone you don't need any special software or anything so this is tethered I'll just call that T um, to the router the access point in there to the router right in the TP Lee I've also got an FG32 plus which is um, also um, got an Ethernet cable to this router so it's connected in there so now basically everything is Wi-Fi and you can see I've got the physical Ethernet cable there going into the router here um, and by the way, all this is powered by our battery. I have a mobile battery which I use for this, and it's just perfect for being able to do spontaneous demos, usually pub top, but today it's in this fantastic facility here in Pittsburgh. Okay, so what I've done to simulate this is I'm basically gonna, this is super fast. So I'm running, I've got a temperature output. I've got two controllers on my wire sheet here. I've got an FW here, which is the wireless, and the FG32 has become wireless because of this router and this cable as the second tab. So I've got two controllers connected at the same time. My FG has got a, um, sorry, the, on, the, on the FW I've got a simulated temperature output here, 74, 73, going into a peer-to-peer -peer object. And it's fast enough that I can run that in a loop in the other controller. It's got a one millisecond turnaround up to 256 points. So this object here is sending it out over the network, this Wi-Fi network. If I go to the FG, I can show you it being received here. And I'm running it into a thermostat object here. In fact, we could make this a little bigger just to zoom in a little to see it. There you go. Um, so you can see this is coming from the FW to the physical FG32 plus into the thermostat. I've set a set point of 70 and I'm switching a relay, which you can hear clicking on and off in the FG32. I'm then sending the same output back through the peer-to-peer -peer network into the FW and you'll see this relay clicks on and off also in the FW. Now of course in real life you probably wouldn't do that but it is good just to show you what is possible and so this input here is coming from the FW, sorry from the FG. <laughs> okay a little complicated but what's amazing about this is that we're using standard Wi-Fi encrypted technology to be able to um, bring controls into the really the Wi-Fi world. You don't need Zigbee anymore. You don't need all those other protocols. And the reason we don't is Wi-Fi costs cents, not dollars. It's really amazing. So we're here at the Carpenters uh, Apprentice Training Area. It is an incredible facility. Uh, it's modern, 
It's a very, very impressive facility. And this is where the carpenters of tomorrow can come out of the disqualified uh, tradesmen. And it's just an amazing facility. Thank you very much, Pat Butler, for allowing us to use your facility for our control training.